Now let's figure out what to put in this cell. Uh, we want a formula. And what's our area under the curve so far by time 0.33? Well, that's whatever area we had under the curve so far by the previous time point, which is this, times the area of the um, under the curve from the previous time point to this time point. Um, so we could use the left side, left hand method or the right hand method or the trapezoid method. Um, if we were to use the left hand method, we would use the, um, the y value at the previous time point, which would be this, and we'd multiply by delta t. That would be the left hand method. If I wanted to use the right hand method, I would use the y value at the current time point times delta t. But to use the trapezoid method, I want to take the average of those two time point of uh, y values at the previous time point and the current time point. And notice here, um, I clicked and dragged uh, to highlight both of those cells at once, and I got a colon in between. It would also be acceptable, it's a little less good, to put a comma there. I'm, I'd still be averaging those two. But what I don't want to do is do a plus because that would add these two, give that one number to the average function. The average function would say, oh, the average of one number is that thing itself, and it would not divide by two. So I really need to give it two numbers here like that. Um, and uh, I didn't talk, but I should think about, we should think about which delta t do I want to use. Uh, I mean, I have two of them on the rows pertaining to this problem. Um, but let's let's try this and remember that this delta t is involving the two time values on the two rows that I'm using for this. If I had used this, that would be using the next row, which I should not be referring to here on this row. Uh, so we've got that. Let's take a look again. Um, and then we'll fill that down. Let's go take a look at this row and make sure it's not accidentally using any blank cells down here. No, that's looking good. Um, so now it's a good time to plot it. Um, usually we would start plotting by uh, clicking on the leftmost column and dragging and highlighting, but that would use delta t as my x-axis, which I don't want to do here. I want to keep using time as my x-axis, so I'm going to click here and drag and not highlight this delta t column. And then I'll insert um, dots with straight line connectors is often good. Uh, whoop. And there we go. Uh, so the uh, the plasma concentration versus time curve is in the blue. That's what we saw already. And then our area under the curve so far is in the orange here. And it seems like it's concave up for a while while the blue curve is increasing. So that makes sense. And then when the blue curve is decreasing, it's very slightly concave. The uh, AUC curve is very slightly concave down. And then the blue curve increases again, so we get a very slight concave up. Uh, and then the blue curve is decreasing, and so we get a somewhat concave down uh, cumulative area under the curve. So that seems to be working. Um, if we were in Calc 2, which we might be, uh, we could ask not only what's the area under the, cur under the blue curve so far as time goes on up to like time 10, time 12, but we might ask, what would the area under the curve be all the way out to infinity? Um, and uh, that's we'll be integrating to infinity in Calc 2. Um, uh, to do that, we'd have to kind of fit a function to either the blue curve or the, uh, the orange curve, probably the blue curve, and then integrate that and then kind of plug in infinity, uh, roughly speaking. Um, so that's our area under the curve using the trapezoid method. Uh, one quick uh, data handling thing to mention, um, I could have, instead of computing delta t in its own column here and then using that, I could have computed delta t by doing a subtraction right here. The great thing about computing delta t in its own column is that then I can plot delta t all by itself and see are all the delta t's the same? That would be a constant horizontal line. Um, are they roughly the same, just with a little jitter? Are they systematically getting longer, like they are here? Are they mostly the same, but with one huge delta t? That would indicate uh, that there's a big time gap in our data set, or even more than one, if I had more than one huge delta t. So that's why it's great to compute the delta t's and plot them as kind of a side study to find out what's going on in your data. It's not part of answering the particular problem we had here for area under the curve up to time t, though. So 
Um, if you're in my Calc 1 class, you'll probably be using this whole area under a curve or trapezoid method integrating step by step so far uh, in one of the projects. Um, and we'll see what happens in Calc 2 as well.